Hey guys, it's your favorite bug, Actinomyces bovis. Join me in causing a good old case of lumpy jaw, but first, a little about me. I'm classified as a gram-positive filamentous rod-shaped bacterium. I'm part of the genera Actinomyces, which means ray-like fungus, which is confusing because I'm definitely a bacterium. I'm one of 32 known species of Actinomyces. I'm a commensal of the bovine oropharynx and GIT. I'm microaerophilic to anaerobic, catalase negative, and hydrolase starch quickly. Now let's cause some lumpy jaw. While lumpy jaw occurs in macropods, humans, and other ruminants, I mainly prefer cattle. Lumpy jaw occurs in all ages, breed, and sex of cattle. I'm what you would call an opportunistic pathogen, infecting after damage to the oral mucosa. Damage can occur secondary to periodontitis or tooth eruption. Damage can also occur after eating sharp objects. Cattle that are mainly fed rough hay and silage have a higher incidence of disease. Once damage occurs, I get into the underlying susceptible soft tissues, particularly around the cheek teeth alveoli. Usually, I'm not the only pathogen that likes to enter these tissues, so infection becomes polymicrobial, potentially making me more pathogenic and is important to know for treatment. Once infected, I cause a chronic, slowly progressive lesion that is often mistaken for neoplasia. This is actually due to a pyogranulomatous reaction and results in the formation of a firm, walled-off abscess that may develop draining tract sinuses. Before the mass is noticeable, you might see these nonspecific symptoms, which mean I always get confused with my cousin, Actinobacillus linearesi, which causes wooden tongue. In fact, I'm quite hard to diagnose, even under a microscope. I can appear like Norcardia, my filamentous form. In my diphtheroidal form, I look like Corinibacterium, and I produce haploid coccoid spores as well as degenerate gram-negative forms. So how do we actually know it's me if I can take on all these forms? Unlike A. linearesi, I infiltrate the bone, causing a rarefying osteomyelitis. This can be seen on x-ray as mottled shadowing. Another characteristic feature of this infection is the presence of sulfur granules within the suppurative exudate. After taking an FNA sample, these granules can be seen macroscopically, especially when mixed with distilled water. These granules can also be seen microscopically and are essentially bundles of filamentous bacteria and mineralized calcium phosphate surrounded by eosinophilic staining Splendor Hopley proteins. You can also confirm a diagnosis using a culture on blood agar. So, treatment. Let's call the vet. Primarily, lumpy jaw is treated by draining and flushing the abscess with copious sterile saline. Systemic antimicrobials can also be given intramuscularly. I'm sensitive to penicillin derivatives. As infections may be polymicrobial, we might need to adjust treatment plans. Additional iodine flushes may be done daily for up to one week. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.